Inside the Classroom is brought to you by NYSED, a union of more than 600,000 professionals dedicated to education, human services, and health care. NYSED is proud to partner with parents in advocating for what students need. We stand for excellence in public education from preschool through post-grad. Find us online at NYSED.org. Hi, I'm Ashley Dreyer. Welcome to another edition of Inside the Classroom. I'm here today with Tracy Tone, a third grade teacher at Union Pleasant Elementary School in the Hamburg School District. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Sure, I'm happy to be here. Now, I know that you're a nationally board certified teacher, and we're going to play a little video clip about the national boards. So I'd like okay. you to tell our audience a little bit about what does it mean to become a national board certified teacher and what did you have to do in order to earn that designation? Sure, um, well it was a great process. Um, it was one that really um, challenged me and pushed me um, to do a lot of great work, a lot of great um, time spent with the students. Um, my certification is in, is in exceptional needs and um, I achieved in 2010 and I've often reflected back on that and the journey that I went through um, to achieve. Um, I encourage all teachers to do it. Um, it's something that you can be very proud of, the work that you've done and um, yeah, I, I think I have to re-up in three years. I think I have to re renew so I'm curious to see what that's going to involve but I'm, I'm excited for that challenge as well. So now I achieved national board certification as well, but years and years ago, and I just went through the process again. Okay. Uh, not to renew, but to complete a different certificate. So I'm wondering if you could tell our viewers a little bit about what you actually have to do to earn national board certification. I know there's many different components. Right. And tell us a little bit about what those components are and, and what the process entails, just in case there's a teacher out there that may want to work toward national board certification. Sure. Um, there were four different components um, and Honestly, it's been a bit since I've, I've actually thought about those, um, but they dealt with um, showing your evidence, um, showing what the students were able to do, um, as well as you know how you as um, a faculty member and a member of the community um, are involved and um, being, participa being a participant um, in the roles of the lives of the children, not just in your class, but in the school as well. Um, I was very fortunate to work with um, Mary Ann Dates through the mm -hmm. South Towns Teacher Center who helped us and guided us throughout mm -hmm. the four different um, domains. Um, I also had to take an online assessment at a testing center um, and um, that was pretty intense uh, um, but I passed so, <laughs> so that was great. good. Um, and um, through the Albert Shanker grant um, that provided the funding for me to actually go through the process and achieve so there really was no out-of-pocket expense. Right, and we do have new funding with the Albert Shanker grant teachers, so if you're interested in that, um, what happens is you initially pay the $475 application fee, but it's reimbursed through, through the Shanker grant, so there is no um, out-of-pocket expense when you're finished with the process. Um, and then the Shanker grant takes care of paying for the other three components. So once you register for the first component and pay that initial $475, the rest of the process is covered by the Albert Shanker grant by New York right. State. Um, and that's a wonderful program that I know I've, I've benefited from and, and thousands of other teachers right. in New York State have benefited from that as well. And Albert Shanker, he really had a vision for what teaching should be and the standards that we should have and how they should be similar to the standards that you would have if you were a doctor or in another profession. So being board certified, we've heard about that for the medical profession. We have that in the teaching profession right. as well and I think it's, it's critical 
that we do take a look at evidence, as you said, mm -hmm. and we take a look at student work and are they demonstrating the skills that they need to have in order to master a concept or the content that we're teaching them or the skills that they need to have in order to be successful and move on to the next level or right. um, journey in their educational careers. Right. I know that um, you had to videotape your teaching as well and submit yes. that. Yes, so. that, that was interesting and the students just loved it, you know, being a part of it. Um, and, you know, again, as I said, I reflect back on that often and, you know, am I doing the best job I can and am I meeting the needs of all my students? So that's, that's always in the back yeah. of my mind and, yeah. you know. It's interesting, too, if you're out there and you're thinking about uh, becoming a National Board Certified Teacher, if you're an educator watching yourself teach and hearing what you're saying and, and how you're presenting the information to students, it definitely helps you become more of a reflective practitioner by undergoing the process, True. I think, of National Board Certification. True. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I am an NBCT. National Board elevates the teaching profession. And teachers, we're the backbone um, of this process. We're in the front lines. We're the profession that makes all the other professions. NBCT should be the status that at least half of our teachers say, you know what, this is, this is where I want to be because I'm a professional. Something happens to you when you become board certified. Once I became certified, I got this network of other people who were just like me, who were passionate about what they did and wanted more for their profession. If we're gonna get people really excited about the process, they need to know about from the beginning and know that's where they need to head. If we could work in all of the elements of what National Board encompasses in those pre-service years, that when they get into the classroom, they'd be that much more focused on who they're teaching what they're teaching and why they're teaching it. Our association works very closely with universities in the state of Idaho to um, help them understand the needs of our schools, public schools, and what teachers need to be able to enter the profession and, and be ready to go. And eventually be able to having national uh, board certification sort of be just another step in the continuum. It's part of our growth as professionals. It's their responsibility not just a right, but their responsibility to start advocating for what is best for their classrooms, what is best for their schools, what is best for their students right now. And I think maybe that we need to do a better job as National Board Certified Teachers getting that out. I see them contributing to the school and to the community in ways they hadn't done before, and not because they weren't good teachers before they became NBCTs, but there's something about joining the profession. As I look at other professions, like the medical profession, I mean, they actually monitor each other. They help each other. So it's educating. It's saying, look, we're, there are 2,600 of us in the state of Arkansas, and where are we? Why are we not a bigger voice? All of our messages need to be about the kids, because after all, that's why we are teachers, and that's why we continue our education, um, so that we can figure out how to help kids be successful. It's, that's what it's all about. It's helpful to have those letters behind your name when we're trying to build this giant profession and telling other people that what I do is an art form, it is a skill. educates and assists our state students, provides medical care and support, and strengthens our communities? We do. NYSIT members are classroom teachers, college faculty and staff, nurses and healthcare professionals. We're cafeteria workers, bus drivers, teacher aides and teaching assistants. We're more than 600,000 caring, supportive professionals living and working in communities across New York State. We are NYSIT. We make a difference. So we um, had someone come out to your classroom yes. and mm -hmm. film a lesson. Tell us a yes. little bit about the lesson that we saw when we visited your classroom. Sure. Um, the students were very excited. Um, they enjoyed this, the young gentleman who came and did the videotaping. Um, 
So in my class, um, we do something called the Daily Five. And many classes, um, it's very common, popular, um, but I tweak it a little bit. Um, so as you know, I have students, I have a small population, I have six kids in my class, um, and they all need a little bit of extra help, a little bit of support, um, uh, more so than some of the other students. So I'm able to work in very small groups. Um, I have a classroom aide, I also have um, a personal aide who works in the room. And um, so our version of Daily Five is there are five different activities that the students have to complete um, each day. And then, um, but the, th the nice thing about this is that they get to choose the order in which they want to complete those mm -hmm. activities. So they're either reading based or they are math based. And um, it's quite interesting. Some of the students will say, um, well, I'm going to do the hardest things first or the, the activities I don't enjoy that much or that are difficult for me. Um, and then I'll go on and do the easiest one, easier ones. And what I found um, a nice little incentive to get them to complete it is if they do finish all five tasks in this allotted time, they get to go to the crafty corner. I have a very artistic group this year. They enjoy um, coloring and using scented markers and um, paint and glitter and, and all those types of things. And so they will make different um, things for themselves to take home. But um, it allows me to do such great differentiation and the kids become so independent and um, there's a checklist that they use. and when they've completed that activity they take it to an adult who signs off um, and then the sheet goes home at the end of the day or I'm sorry at the end of the week um, so the parents can see what they've been working on as well. So you so. have some learning centers done in your classroom we, we that do. students will visit and we do. complete yes. the activity for yes. the day. Yes, um, we use Words Their Way um, which is a phonics based reading um, slash spelling program that our district has adopted and we use. Um, I do hot cold reads with the children so on Monday um, they have a passage that's at their level um, and I time them see how fast they can read it in a minute um, so obviously working on fluency and then throughout the week they have to read it again but not timed um, to someone else and then on Friday I do the hot read. Um, Monday when they're done we graph it and they color it in blue because it's a cold read and then I'm on Friday they color it in red because it's a hot read and every single week everyone increases um, mm -hmm. and we you know make a big announcement about it we do a round of applause and we're just so excited for them mm -hmm. as as are they um, we also use a program called reflex math um, so they're on the computer and it's working on fact fluency um, one of the centers is writing I provide a prompt um, and um, they either address the prompt and then we've also gotten into where they're writing to one of the adults in the room and we write mm -hmm. back to them so that's very motivational and then the last center um, depending on what the child needs it's either working on comprehension or it's working on sight words um, and we're using a program through Orton Gillingham um, that works on uh, teaching the kids um, how to learn those sight words. So, um, so there's a lot going on yeah. and when you come in and, and I think it was videotaped on there and then we also have a classroom pet um, who is Midnight the guinea pig um, oh, and neat. yeah he has I been a, the kids love he, that. They do, they do. So they all have jobs every day. Um, someone does something mm -hmm. different with him and um, it's been a great motivational um, Oh, it's an opportunity for the kids because if they don't complete their homework the night before, then unfortunately they don't get to have their job with midnight. So Aww. our homework completion has really gone up. So great. Yeah. I love the way you use data to chart progress in reading fluency. I think yes. that that is very powerful when the students can actually see mm -hmm. their progress and see how they're moving forward in their fluency and right. improving as the week progresses. Right. And, really kind of gives them day-by-day -day data yes. of how they're doing. Yeah, and we have fluency. these reading certificates that they can take home on Friday as well and you know make a big deal mm -hmm. of it and really lends itself well to the positive environment that we have in the classroom too. Well that's great. Let's take a look inside uh, Tracy Tone's classroom and see her lesson with her third graders. Boys and girls, we're going to get started with our daily five. So I'll know you're ready when you're in your seat right here and your eyes are on me. So, we are on Tuesday, right? Very short week. Today is our last day. You need to get four of these activities done in order to go to Crafty Corner, where you can do art projects and use the scented markers and all that fun stuff. Finish that up, please. Words their way. Everyone's taking their celebration today. Which group did you want to start with, Mrs. Wachowski? Uh, we'll have to start with group two. Okay, so we're going to start calling that the strawberry group. 
Group one will be the orange group, and the third group, Robert, which is you alone, will, you're the grape group. So we're gonna, learn, we're gonna talk about that next week. Um, hot cold reads, I have most people's binders up here who have not finished. There's quite a few of you that still have questions to do and many that still have to do their hot read with me. And I'll probably be able to sneak in a cold read as well. Reflex math, I think our computers are up and running. Writing, some of you for writing just need to do your illustration and it's at your desk. We'll start with Chloe. Come on up here. And everybody else may go off to daily five. Yes, it is. That's a new record for you. Can I have that pink thing right behind you? Thank you. <laughs> Boys and girls, hold the phone. Great news. Chloe Jimmo just got the highest cold read yet at 43 words in one minute. Round of applause for Chloe. Woohoo! Love it. Love it, honey. I'm working with her. Sure, just wait there patiently. Great job. Okay, and you can get your clipboard and I'll sign you off also. So before I look, you're gonna check and make sure that the sentence has everything it needs. Uppercase at the beginning, finger spaces, punctuation at the end. You let me know when you want me to look at it. Look at number three. Is that an uppercase W? Does it touch the top line and the bottom line? Good. Wait, remember when you erase, what do you wanna do? There you go. Brush it away. All right, great. I'm ready to hear you read. A turkey has beautiful feathers. Nice. Both pilgrims are wearing gray. Good. Will you? Not will. Will. Would. Would you like to wear this hat? This new, new. hat? Very good. Nice reading. So that was writing. Because, um... Put it in the wrong spot? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. But I don't know whose paper this is. I could put my name at the top, couldn't I? Wow. Well, we don't have a lot of time because we have lunch coming. So I'll know you're ready when your eyes are up here. You're going to help? Yeah. Can I do that? Sure. Here we go. Today is Tuesday. Tomorrow is 20. The month is November. 21. 2017. That's called the year. Physical education. Education. New sentence. It, it was is friendship, friendship feast. feast. I forgot the word today. What does that mean, friendship feast? So the friendship feast, everyone brought something in, right? Yeah. A different kind of food that you chose, and we're going to open the containers and put them all into the big bowl and mix them up, and then we share with everybody, and you'll each get a cup full of our trail mix or our friendship feast. We also have the applesauce that you helped this morning to peel and cut, and it's in the crock pot cooking right now. Yes, that's when we'll have the applesauce during the feast in the afternoon, and we have some apple juice to drink as well. 
Yep. And then you have those nice placemats, the turkey placemats that you wrote, that you made, and on the back are the things that you are thankful for. You can take those home today, and you can use those on your table on Thanksgiving. Make sure you show them to your moms and dads. You can rely on your union. We're always by your side, safeguarding your workplace rights, advocating for fair pay and benefits, and ensuring you have a voice on the job. You work hard. Isn't it nice to know your union works hard for you? You and your union. Together, we stand up for our students. We strengthen public education and health care. Together, we make a difference. Welcome back to Inside the Classroom. We're here with Tracy Tone, a third grade teacher at Union Pleasant Elementary School in Hamburg. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you for joining us today. I to just wanted to um, ask you a little bit about some of your roles in the district. We know oh, that sure. teachers do so many different things, um, both inside their classroom and outside of their classroom. So tell our audience a little bit about you, how many years you've been teaching, and sure. what kind of roles you've played over the course of your career, both maybe in your classroom or outside of your classroom for your school district. Sure. And um, in terms of maybe professional development as well. Sure. Um, let's see. Well, this is my 31st year teaching, and um, I do what I do because of my younger brother, Bob, um, who has special needs. And I always knew um, growing up, I'm one of five kids, that um, I wanted to be a teacher. So um, I, uh, I thank my brother for that because he. Uh, got me to where I am today. Um, so my role, um, I've been in several different districts and um, most recently I just made the move from one of the elementary buildings at Hamburg to the one that I'm in now. Um, in the former building um, I was the student support team um, coordinator so I facilitated the SST meetings that we have within our building. Now tell our um, audience what the student support team is because I bet there's a lot of people out there that don't know how closely we take a look at our students in the public schools and how sure. we really work very hard to make sure that they're all getting the help that they need. Sure. Um, so when a teacher has a concern about their students, um, their, um, they should be documenting and tracking information, um, data about their student. They um, refer that child to the student support team and um, in conjunction with the parents who are in, in our district are invited to the meeting, um, we come together as a group. Usually there is um, a speech therapist, sometimes a school psychologist, sometimes a counselor if there are fine motor needs, sometimes the occupational therapist um, will join. And then um, in my role I would facilitate the meeting um, and we just listen to what people have to say and the concerns and what they are and, and try to come up with a plan and uh, usually then we meet again in six weeks um, and hear from the teacher and those people involved and um, and the process continues um, you know sometimes it may lead to further testing um, sometimes there may be just other opportunities through response to intervention that mm -hmm. can happen within the classroom um, you know we have the the resources of the academic intervention specialist both in reading and math um, and often we have administrators that sit in on the meetings as well so it's just good communication um, it's you know people working together as a team and I think the integral part of as well are the parents that they're there because mm -hmm. in my opinion they know their child better than anybody so yes. I think if we can incorporate everyone together you know that that really helps um, I'm not in that role any longer since I'm in a, a, you know a different building um, Gosh, uh, professional but, development. I mean, yeah. I've taken um, 23 classes beyond my master's. Um, I, I'm always taking classes through the South Towns Teacher Center. Uh, I just consider myself a lifelong learner. Um, you know, I'm now one of the peer coaches in our district, so I um, am able to support the new teachers. And we, at Hamburg, luckily, have many new teachers. So it's it's wonderful to see um, the district growing and changing and. Um, being you know, able to provide I love support. that too. I love having student teachers and working with new teachers yes. because you get new ideas mm -hmm. from, from younger people coming into the profession. Right. But it's great that you're giving back through being a peer coach. There may be some of our viewers out there who don't know what that is, but tell us a little bit about what peer coaching is. Sure. Um, so, and that's the idea. It's on the same level, peer to peer. Mm -hmm. um, we're not in any way, you know, evaluative or anything. We're we're there. We like to think of ourselves as a professional friend who's there to help them and support them along the way. So, if they needed um, someone to come in and observe them, 
um, you know, offer ideas and suggestions possibly prior to an observation from an administrator um, to explain the APPR process, um, you know, just to email and, and whatnot to keep that, to keep that communication going. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed it. Yeah, at Lewiston Porter, we just started a peer collaboration program. Okay. So we will meet twice with our peer collaboration partners throughout the school year. Okay. And so I have a new teacher that I'm working with, so I will be able to observe her classroom twice. It's Great. not evaluative, but I'm sure there'll be something that she'll give me to look at while I'm in the class, whether it's watching a particular student or watching uh, just something that she might want to tweak or improve or feel um, get feedback on. So I'll be going to her, her classroom twice to do that and then we'll debrief and then she'll come into my classroom twice and I'll give her something specific that I would like her to observe and that I'm working on or get feedback on and that sort of thing. So right. I think it's a wonderful way it is. for teachers really to get that feedback and also right. um, work with other professionals to get new ideas and collaborate exactly. around exactly. different uh, curricular areas. So I think that's so so important in the teaching profession and the fact that it's uh, not evaluative at all, that it's exactly. non-judgmental, mm -hmm. it's not evaluative. You can be yourself and really um, lay it all out and do your best lesson and, and get some valuable feedback that then you can incorporate to move forward. Right. In, your, uh, in your teaching. Right. So. I like what you said because I've already learned from my people, <laughs> my peeps as we call them. <laughs> um, you know, there's things that they're sharing with me. So yeah. it, it's great. It's a great relationship. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you so much, Tracy, sure. for joining us today. Oh, thank I'm you happy for to having be here. us in your classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, we loved it, and I know our viewers are going to love seeing your kiddos as great. well. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. We get you started early. We stay with you in middle school. We see you through graduation, college, and beyond, realizing potential every step of the way. We're New York State United Teachers, 600,000 professionals dedicated to excellence in public education. But that's not all. We also provide healthcare and human services to New Yorkers of all ages. We're NYSET, caring for patients, working for students, working with our communities. Inside the Classroom is brought to you by NYSET, a union of more than 600,000 professionals dedicated to education, human services, and health care. NYSET is proud to partner with parents in advocating for what students need. We stand for excellence in public education from preschool through postgrad. Find us online at NYSET.org.